So get this, my bum of a husband, he kicks me out of his house because he's a mama's boy and he does whatever they tell him to. I guess this idiot is forgetting that I'm the one who got him a job. So guess what? I can just as easily make him lose that job. <laughs> Not everybody gets along with their in-laws, right? Well, I'm no exception. I've been the breadwinner in the family for the last five years or so. Our family is my husband, my in-laws, and me. And I guess those are the downsides of having married a painter. Don't get me wrong, Mike's been pretty good in the medium. Recognized and all, having won contests and been the star of many art shows. That is even one of the things that attracted me the most, because of the artistic sense at the time he, well, courted me all those years back. However, for practical purposes nowadays, art has not become so lucrative in the painting area. Unfair, I know, but no matter how much I complain or say that it's not fair, society will not change that slogan. Painters don't make money. On the other hand, I, being part of a fairly large company and in position that has been the result of almost a decade of effort, and not to mention dedication, can afford certain luxuries that no, uh, rather I could afford, were it not for the fact that I have to keep the reins of the, uh, entire family in check. His parents, my in-laws, they're retired, and their retirement does not give them enough to keep them afloat. So that's where I come into the equation. It's been that way for five years now, them retiring three years ago, and things have been nothing but loud, rude, and frustrating. They look like furniture that brings nothing but dust to the house. And the worst part is that Mike just plays along, saying they're too old to try anything new. We've had a few ideas and ventures over the past few years, but it's almost like a year and a half since the subject of money has come up again in the house. When we got married, I moved in with Mike and he told me that despite everything, he was not going to lack a warm and loving home, and although money would not go amiss, the truth is that those things are also in short supply here. My in-laws are strong-willed people. Mr. Nigel is a curmudgeon, so I don't understand how they could have just wanted him and his previous job in the first place. Meanwhile, Mrs. Lydia is a top pushover. She always does whatever everyone else tells her to do, but... When it's her turn to do something on her own, she becomes the most useless person in the world. Gosh, how good it feels to finally get this off my chest. I hope neither of them is reading this. <laughs> in itself, both of them are the perfect recipe for failure, and if we add their son, hey, it's the absolute cherry on the top of the cake. As I said, We've had a few ventures in the past few years, but it's almost always ruined because of them. For the time we tried to do a dessert business, for instance, if there's one thing that Miss Lydia's good at, it's cooking. But because of the pressure of having to make food for strangers, it was the first time she failed so disastrously in a kitchen. And the publicity Mr. Nigel was giving her was not the best either. We'd been talking about this project for months, and you want to know how long it lasted? Two weeks! Two weeks! I consider it one of the biggest failures I've ever had in my life, and watching all that excitement fade away was not easy pill to swallow, I tell ya. And in the midst of it all, Mike was there for support. He did his thing too, I won't deny it. He had his projects and a formal job years ago, but those were kind of tough times for him. There was a lot of things that he's not proud of and that, well, we had to talk about quite a bit when we got married. And I hope they're all healed by now. It was a very dark time for him and it's not a good thing to talk about, completely respectable. I'm writing all this just to tell you about a plan I'm starting to hatch. Where I'll have Mike apply for a position to the company. My company. He doesn't have years of experience, but he has a very creative mind, and that's something we're looking for in a big way. He once helped me with an advertising project I had in mind, and the results were outstanding, so a one hand helps the other. I hope he can take a break from all this martyrdom of not being the pillar of the house, and who knows, maybe in the future, well, even move to a separate house. Can you imagine? 
our own house to call our own? What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So today's story is that of a heated drama, a breadwinner having to cover every expense while she's not liking it. There's multiple updates to hop into. So we're going to jump into update number one, but hey, if you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, just take a second, click that subscribe button underneath this video right now, and let's jump into update number one. Well, they say that families help each other and between couples even more so, I guess. I managed to get Mike a position in the advertising area at my company, where the vacancy just came up. When I saw that they were hiring, I sent Mike a quick message, telling him to send his resume to the company email ASAP. He was hesitant at first, but then I convinced him when I told him how much the pay would be. It was almost instantaneous. So, I knew where I had to convince him. And so he did it. And that was last week, and I was told by the office that they will be answering emails by tomorrow, with a clear chance of Mike staying on. Well, more than clear chances. <laughs> a little secret between you and me. It's been confirmed. <laughs> That's right, they gave me the spoiler that he managed to get the position. And I told him about it at dinner last night. I'm very excited, but more than that, I'm relaxed at that. This time, we can be a functional couple, and maybe this way, the parents, more or less indirectly, will try to find some job, or at least a hobby to keep them distracted. Dinner went from good to better, as Miss Lydia prepared her famous zucchini lasagna, and that only happens at special times. It was at my request that I told her to prepare it, uh, Already, from then on, Mike could tell that something good was going to happen. It was as if he was conditioned to it. I took the spotlight of the meal and told them about how Mike had gotten the job. Everyone was overly excited and even thanked me for accomplishing such a feat. Although, I told them I did not have much to do with it. If I could strike a sour note, it was that Mike's father... Mr. Nigel made some not-so-timely comments. For example, when I commented on the great news, almost the first sentence he said after congratulations was, and how much is he going to win? I know Mike asked the same thing, but it was in a conversation between him and me and not in the middle of the whole dinner. It was fortunate that no one paid attention to him and that it was just the four of us, otherwise it would show the only interest that drives the family. Well, Mike will have to prepare next week for his training, where he'll be briefed on the working methods that we have in this company. I can't tell him how much about it. It's not because I don't want to, but because it's a completely different area than mine, so it'll be a complete stretch for him. However, I'm confident that he will do well. He's great at creative projects, and he seems very excited about what he's going through. He has some insecurities, but hey, We'll be working on that as time goes on. The company does not have a policy of family members or partners working together, as long as they're separate departments. So, this won't matter much, and we may even be able to share lunches. It seems kind of romantic to me for a certain perspective, because maybe that'll help us a little bit with our relationship to cement it more. Uh, you know what I mean? Update number two. Hey guys, I know I haven't updated in a while. It's been a month since Mike started working at my company. I must admit that he has not done badly at all. He's come on leaps and bounds and has managed to make friends with many of the other workers in his department. He'd never been one to make friends, but something within the job made him open up a lot more, to the point of going out a couple nights with him to drink a few beers. Something I never minded in my wildest dreams would imagine that he would do. <laughs> Especially since he hardly even likes alcohol. Or, well, that's what he told me. That he stopped drinking since about eight years ago, but I'm glad he's interacting with people more. Being cooped up all the time while I'm working in the garage with his paintings can drive anyone crazy. So, he needs to go out and distract himself, and what better way to do that than to make money in the process? Mind you, we have not been able to see enough of each other during our lunch breaks, because his group usually leaves earlier, and by the time mine sits down to eat, his group is getting back to work. 
although he did once during the early days decide to wait for me. Only it did not work out quite well for him because it used up more of his work time. A risky thing to do, given that he only had the job for a few days. Meanwhile, his parents are somewhat more productive and less whiny around the house. Well, I've noticed something in the last few days. They seem to be very excited about Mike's work to the point that almost every dinner they ask him how his day was. I understand it's because they're his parents and all, but they have very rarely asked me how I did at work, and that made me feel a little displaced. I mean, I'm the one who puts food on the table. Gentlemen, they could at least pretend to care a little bit about my life and everything I do to earn a living. But hey, these are the things that happen that I don't have the power to control. As long as I know Mike is active and getting things done, that's fine with me. Update number three. Just a quick update, something quick. I don't know what happened, but when I arrived home after a hard work day, I left at 8 o'clock, dying of sleep, and I found the house with the lights off. The only ones that were on were the ones in my in-laws room, and as I passed through the hallway, I heard somebody crying. Mike. I asked what happened, and he just immediately came out, telling me, oh, it's nothing, and that he was just talking to his parents about some family stuff. It seems strange to me, since in all our years of marriage, we have told each other everything. From some physical problems to the time when he told me that a girl was going to overdo it with him. <laughs> we can trust each other, but it looks different now. I don't know if the new job has anything to do with it, and if it was the one of his parents has a medical condition. I don't know, I mean, I'm just guessing here. He knows he can tell me about it. I don't know what all the mystery is about, but I'm just writing this a day later. This morning, I decided to ask him what happened. But he told me it's nothing, and now he's in better spirits? Well, I don't know about you, but that makes me even worry even more. Update number four. Well, guys, strap yourself in for this update, because it's amazing how ungrateful people can be. Two months have passed since I got the jerk Mike to get a job, and guess what? I've been kicked out of the house. I have so much to write about at the same time, and excuse me if I tend to come across as obfuscating or incoherent. I'm even crying as I write this. It all started because out of the blue, they decide to give bonuses to the workers and the advertising sector. Hey, that's Mike's sector, right? They were pretty substantial bonuses to the point where they could rival my salary a bit. The salary of someone who has been with the company for a decade. And far from envying him or feeling indigenous, I was super happy. He was excited and it showed even the way he expressed himself. He would come home with several ideas in the advertising section and he would go straight to the bedroom to jot them down. That could take him all night, and sometimes I had to tell him to go to the living room because he would not let me sleep, and I needed my rest. Ah, well, how about that? On one of those days, I arrived home to find Mike and his parents in the living room waiting for me. I felt quite nervous, I won't deny it. And when he told me to sit down, I thought I was, well, going back to my childhood when my parents scolded me for a bad grade. This is what I remember him saying to me word for word. Emily, I've wanted to talk to you for a while now. You see, I'm not very comfortable with the way we are. Since I've had this job, I've possessed quite a bit of financial independence. Well, that's not exactly what he said, but it's what he tried to say. I'm just interpreting the real message between the lines. And then he says, and, well, that's allowed me to help my parents and myself to understand a lot of things that are going on in my life currently. I feel that the relationship that you and I have is somewhat burdensome, and I feel that at one point it was even codependent on my part, something I would like to apologize for. The rest of the speech was him telling me how bad he felt for, quote, holding me back all these years. And the worst thing is that it was in front of his own parents. Tell me what kind of mature adult makes these kind of speeches in front of their parents. Good grief. It's like taking your friends to support you at a baseball game. Uh, not. 
What I remember most about the feeling was having a sour taste in my mouth like something was making me feel queasy in the atmosphere. His parents did not say much, at least not until I spoke up. I asked him why they should be present while we had our couple issue. And he said since they were his parents, owners of the house, they might as well have a say in the matter. Does that make any sort of sense to you guys? Well, because every single person I've talked to about this says the same thing, and I quote, Thank goodness you left that house, girl. He would always bring up to my face that since they had decades together, they might as well be a model for a perfect marriage, not realizing that the perfect, quote, marriage consisted of a man who complained about everything and a lady who, well, has lived submissively most of her life. Would there be a hidden narrative with that? Could it be that he wants to minimize my role as a woman in the relationship? What do you guys think? Ah, uh, yes. I would say that I left the house on my own. You don't know how much I would like to say it, but the reality is different. In the end, the conversation took a bitter turn. Where Mike told me things that he had been feeling and had stopped feeling for a long time, and I felt it was time to express it. The more I think about it, the more I understand everything that happened. The guy was not happy in his relationship, but since his girlfriend was the one who gave him food and paid for everything in the house, the very parasite, Mr. and Mrs. Parasite, <laughs> kept quiet, putting up with the supposed yoke exercised by the figure of power and authority who did not know what a figure of power and authority was. If it had been up to me, I would have taken all my money for my stuff and just gone, and even found someone who was not so martyred. A word that he used heavily during our conversation, martyr this, martyr that. And having such a hard time for years. I don't think Mike even understands how bad that makes me feel. It makes me feel like the only reason he was with me was for the money, and because I did not let his family starve, and what about love? What about the romance? Where he promised me heaven and earth those years back, and that he would treat me like a muse for his paintings. Lies, lies, and more lies. All the time he was a fake, and he used me until I was no longer useful to him, and to top it off, I was the reason he has a job. If it's not for me, he'd be sitting here putting up with me. My god, I can't stop crying. I'm starting to feel so bad about myself because of that family. I know I'm not the one with the problem, though, and yet I feel like I only matter because of my efficiency, not the way I am. Every time I think and rethink all this, and after the sadness passes, the hatred and thirst for revenge, or at least justice, begins to wail up. It's not at all fair to have spent so much time and effort for years, only to have it done when the time comes to get rid of me. And... I know that one way or the other, his parents are involved in this. Maybe that's why he wanted them to stay with us that night, to be his support, knowing it was all going to end very badly. Well, I'm thinking about something. It's kind of abrupt, and it might cause some problems, but not for me, which is why I'm considering it. What if something happened to Mike at work? What if I could get some revenge? Well... I might just get some revenge after all. Update number five. Hey guys. They better not mess with me if they know what's good for them. Ha! <laughs> I say this because I managed to come up with a master plan that caused and... Well, please don't tell anybody. Mike to lose his job! But before you judge me and say that I'm a terrible petty person, I must clarify two things. Number one. He dared to get rid of me when I was the one who helped him get ahead. Of course, it's normal for couples to separate, but he was able to find a more mature way to do it that was not a talk where he said that the martyrdom he went through during all that time by my side. And he said these words right next to his parents. With whom I've communicated again, by the way, not uh, nearly as much. This generated in me several insecurities that I'm trying to cope with you, but I tell you that the plan helped me a lot to do so. It is the living representation of not biting the hand that feeds you. Number one. 
What I did, while it may seem like it was purely for revenge, I did it for the benefit of the company as well. Since Mike got the job, I've been keeping a very sharp eye on what he's been doing, and the methods and strategies that he implements, and I must confess something that there are shady moves in front of those strategies. I don't know if you remember that quite a while ago, I told you about dark times in Mike's life as they were concerning his first office jobs, where he used to steal ideas from foreign companies. And if not steal, at least the term shoot comes in. From some weird internet pages, he used to review and adopt them to our Western context. This is not a creative practice at all and can even get me into some legal trouble. So I decided to make some suggestions anonymously to the top management at the company. It was actually that I told a couple of work colleagues. The ones who hated Mike and for what he did to me. They stepped up to the plate and brought him down. There they were. They were the ones who took the complaint and the next day they were summoning Mike to the management office. His departure was almost immediate and I remember that I was even there when he took his stuff out. I tried to talk to him just to give him false support, but he preferred to continue without addressing me. I don't know if it was out of annoyance or embarrassment, maybe a bit of both. In that case, I'm 100% sure that he does not know it was me. For all that time that, well, has passed since we separated, and he will believe that if he wanted him to, I would have come to the bosses with the information a long time ago. As for me, I'm still at my routine job, where I keep the accounts in order, and I tend to look at some of the things in my office with a bit of nostalgia. I still have a picture of Mike and me from years ago, right next to a decorative piece of clay he gave me. In theory, we're just separated, but if there's going to be a definite breakup, it's something that has to be talked about for sure. And I won't be the one to make the first move, or at least not at the moment. I'll wait a few months to see if he shows interest in getting back together, and if so, I'll be considering it a bit. I have to say, it gave me a bit of grief to see him leave his office, being scolded by the bosses since we were together for over six years, and I still have a huge fondness of him, don't get me wrong. But treating me like that is not something you should do to your wife, or anyone for that matter. Update number six. You won't believe this. I'm rolling on the floor laughing because it's unbelievable how immoral people can be. So hypocritical and false. Last week, I get a call from my mother-in-law, Miss Lydia. She tells me that they need to talk to me privately, and I told her to set up a meeting at the mall, and that seems strange to me. Mostly because Mr. Nigel almost always sits in his living room stalls, and hardly ever leaves the house. I thought it must be serious, and my mind starts to run a mile a minute, going from an apology to my considering hurting himself. Overblown, I know, but I wasn't so on the ball by then. I'm writing this just after the meeting I had with them, and my assumptions weren't so wrong after all. At first, they asked me how I had been doing and if everything in my life was in order. A strange way to start a conversation, I know, but I told them I'm fine and asked them how they were doing, and the truth is that physically, I did not feel them at all well. Even though it had only been a few months, they seemed to have aged uh, five years denoting how not so well they were doing in their daily dynamics, and they told me that Mike had gotten a new job, but it was not giving him enough to keep the family afloat. Since he'd been laid off, he had been a very bad run of the jobs, and something that seemed even exaggerated to me in the small window of time that we've been apart. Initially, they asked me if there was not a chance that Mike could be reinstated on the project, if I could not maybe... Pull some strings here or there so he could come back like the first time. They ignored the fact that it was because of me that he was fired. When I told him that such help was not in my jurisdiction, that's when the pair broke up. It was Mr. Nigel, famously, who asked me if I would please forgive his son for his low behavior, and I said, What? It's because of them we indirectly broke up, and then I know they were the ones who wanted to kick me out of the family home in the first place. And there I was, listening to an older couple plea for me to get back to their son who looked down on me. I understand there has not been a divorce yet, but if there was a moment closer to it, that was it. Right now, 
I'm going through an internal conflict about what to do and what not to do. Affection is not a race just like that, but anger is making me see things differently, or at least the way that they always were. I honestly don't know how I got out of that conversation. I just told them I would reflect at home, even knowing that they would never hear from me again. I know from social media and some gossip from friends that Mike is not doing well. I know he was preparing a new exhibition, but I don't know what has come about that. I think it's a project still in development, and all I know is that I have to focus on my work, since I don't have a partner now and no responsibilities of having to keep a household afloat. I can have more opportunities and savings than before. I would not want to say that I am living in paradise, as the scar of Mike's memory is still there, very much alive. I feel that despite everything, I must talk to him again, to be able to settle all the pending issues that we have, which, I know, are not few. Update number 7. This is the final post by OP. Guys, remember to always do everything for your good. There'll be a difficult moment where it seems like you're a bad person, but you must understand, and you must stand by your convictions. I decided to leave my relationship with Mike for good. It's been almost a year since then, and although the road has not been easy, at least I can say that my life has been as comfortable as possible for years now. I spoke with both Mike and his parents some time ago, and I decided not to return because I was reflecting, and I thought that to support that family would be to foster a group of individuals who would not make a muscle to survive. Even Mr. Nigel bent his nagging attitude to beg me to go back to his son and just forgive him for everything, but I cannot accept it. It's just not in my nature. I've heard little from Mike since then. We divorced a couple months ago, and the last I heard, he's been from job to job, and although he managed to pull off the art show that he planned, he did not do so well in the process. I was told he even lost money, but I'd rather not believe it. I was also told some time ago that he was starting to date another girl. We had not even finished divorcing and he's already on the dating scene, huh? That guy wastes no darn time. And that's the girl, uh, well, she had a very good job, apparently. I'd like to have that poor soul in front of me just to warn uh, what the heck she's getting into. But I'd rather stay out of Mike's life for the time being. I, on the other hand, like I said, can't be better. I've been given a lot of bonuses this past year as they've been, well, they've heard about my situation and said, hey, let's give Emily enough for an apartment. <laughs> and me having an apartment, what the hell? I never in a thousand years would I imagine something like this. If I ever date someone, aside from the love and affection we should have for each other, we should also be able to help and contribute to each other and, well, the both of us. That's what an adult relationship is all about. The other day, I found Miss Lydia shopping for vegetables, and she chose a few, and I helped her with a few extra tomatoes. She looked at me with wistful eyes, as if begging one more time to come back, but my gaze was already different. I've already turned that page in my life over. So, when he invited me to have that cup of coffee at his house, my old house, I politely declined. I have work to do. I'll be honest with you guys. Most of the commenters, I do agree with them. I'm happy that Emily put this man behind her and the toxic family that, well, was part of the story, all behind her and she, at the end of it, declined the invitation to come and have a cup of coffee. Because we know what a cup of coffee can lead to, right? Well, turns out that she just doesn't want to have any contact with her ex and she just wants it to be over. So, maybe somebody watching this has been in a similar predicament. Maybe you've been through the same thing. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think OP made the right decision by basically walking away at the end of the story? Drop your comments down below. Guys, if you're new to the channel, what's up? My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day, and then we talk about it in the comments. Stop on by, see what the story is today, guys. Have a great one, and I'll catch you in the next one. I'll see ya!